Hi, and welcome to another video on UiPath with me, Jeppe. In this one, we're taking a look at advanced triggers in Orchestrator. But before we get started, please click the watermark in the lower right to subscribe to my channel. But now, let's get to it. So if you're not familiar with scheduling triggers in Orchestrator, I'll give you a 10 second intro, and then we'll move on to the topic of this video, which is slightly more advanced triggers. But what you do is inside of your folder in Orchestrator, and this is my default folder, you go into the processes page, and here you have your processes, and you have different tabs up here at the top. You have the processes, you have the jobs that have been executed on those processes, you have logs, and then right here, you have the triggers tab. And when you click the triggers tab, you can add a trigger, and then you can define when you want a process to run. And you can either run the process as the result of an action on a queue. If a new item has been added to a queue, you can react to that and execute a process. But in this video, we're looking at time-based triggers. And this is where you simply define a new trigger. We'll call it my trigger. We'll say what process do you want it to execute? What robot do you want it to be executed by? What time zone? And then you can set that, for example, you want to run this on every Friday at 12.15. And you can click Add, and now you have a trigger that runs this process called My Very Nice Process every Friday at 12.15. And we can see that it'll run it in two days. But what if we want to go a little deeper than that and do some more advanced scheduling? Let's go back in and edit this trigger that I've just made. And we have Easter coming up here in Denmark. Today is March 31st. So on Friday, the day after tomorrow, the company will be closed and we don't want this automation to run. How do you do that specifically for next Friday? One way is using the non-working days restrictions calendars down here. And what you would do then is you would go into the tenant settings and click the settings button up here. And in here, you would go to the non-working days tab. And here you can create a new calendar. So, for example, I will create a new calendar here called uh, Public Holidays. And we'll go to next month, which is April, and we'll select Friday here. Because we don't want this to run on Friday. We could also add a, a number of other holidays. We could add Christmas and Constitution Day and stuff like that to this calendar. But for this example, we just want to make sure that it doesn't run on Friday. So we mark Friday and we click Save. And now we have a public holidays calendar for non-execution days for the robots that apply this calendar to their triggers. So go back to the default folder, into processes, into triggers. And if we edit this trigger now, we can now add a calendar to this non-working days restrictions down here. So we'll select our public holidays calendar. We'll update the trigger. And now we can see that the trigger still runs at 12.15 only on Fridays. But it's not going to run in two days, it's going to run in nine days, because, because this coming Friday, the day after tomorrow, is a non-working day according to the calendar. So this is one way of specifying which days should a robot run and which days should it not run. And you can go crazy on these calendars, uh, to be honest. And you can define you know, multiple calendars and apply a specific one to a specific trigger. Now, if we go back to our trigger, and edit it. There's also another option called advanced down here. And what this will let you do is enter a cron expression in this field. And what the hell is a cron expression, you might ask. And if you go to Wikipedia, for example, that will put you to sleep real fast because there's a long story about what a cron expression is. But what I can tell you is that it's simply a syntax for defining schedules. And some people will argue that that's not the exactly correct definition, but that's what we use it for here in UiPath. And unless you really want to get into how you write cron expressions, I would just skip the Wikipedia and whatever documentation you can find online. And I would go to this page, freeformatter.com. This is a really nice web page. It might not be the best looking web page, but it has some really great content. It has HTML formatters, uh, different types of validators, decoders, converters, and stuff like that. And they are all really, really good tools for developers like you and I. And one thing they have in here is they have this cron expression generator. And if we go into that, we can see here that we can do sort of the same thing as we did inside of Orchestrator, except at a much more detailed level. So we can say here that we want to run this, you know, any year, every uh, seven years, starting in 2020, uh, 2024. And we want it only to run during certain months. on certain days. Actually, we'll go with uh, the nearest weekday 
which is Monday to Friday, to the 14th, no, 13th of the month. And we will want it to run every hour between five, 6 in the morning and 12 noon. And we want it to run at certain minutes during that hour. So that will result in this cron expression. And this cron expression is uh, what you can then paste into Orchestrator. It also has a very nice cron expression evaluator up here. So if we paste in what we just generated and click the Describe Expression button, this will actually tell us that this will run at 0 seconds at 0, 12, 34, and 46 minutes every hour between 6 a.m. and noon on the nearest weekday to the 13th of the month of January, May, June, and December every seven years starting in 2024. So this is not something that's very easy to set up in a calendar inside of Orchestrator. But if we paste the expression into the cron expression field here and update it, then we will get more or less the same thing as we saw inside of the free formatter web page. So one slightly annoying thing in Orchestrator is that you cannot really read what it says here unless you do a lot of resizing of the fields and stuff like that. Um, and with the expression that we just made, you know, this is going to be really, really difficult. Some of the fields in here, like, like this one, we can see when it will run the next time in that little pop-up right there. But on this field, we don't get any information like that. So if you have one of these cron expressions, you know, you might actually have to go into the editor, copy this uh, expression out into the clipboard, paste it into the free formula expression describer, and then run that and then get this result so you can find out what your schedule is actually doing. But with the use of the calendars inside of the tenant settings, right here, of the non-working days, and the cron builder at freeformatter.com, and I'm sure there's other web pages out there that will do the same, you are able to do some very advanced scheduling of your automations. If you like this video, click the little watermark down in the right-hand corner to subscribe to my channel. Also give it a like and maybe hit the notification bell so you'll be notified next time I put out new videos. I try to put out videos two, three times a week. So if you subscribe, you won't miss anything. Anyways, that's it for this time. Stay safe. Thanks for watching.